So basically, Food for Thought, we are creators of organic and fair trade specialty foods, okay? And we're a mission-based company, so our mission is to create and raise awareness around just and sustainable food systems. Um, our kind of niche here are fruit preserves, and we do, again, all organic. We have the first fair trade and only fair trade certified preserves in the country. Well, I think I went through the typical awakening that anyone would. You know, I went to those parts of the world to try to be of service. And, you know, you always go there thinking you're going to do something, but then yeah. something else presents itself and your world right. changes and, your, you know, your, your worldview gets scrambled. And so, you know, the piece that got scrambled for me was just actually visualizing and seeing and working in agricultural areas where people's entire economies are geared towards export agriculture to feed first world consumption habits. Um, and you know those that dynamic is the fuel to everything from civil war to environmental right, degradation right. to you know human rights abuses and 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 it does nothing but perpetuate poverty. It mm -hmm. doesn't bring countries mm -hmm. out of poverty. Right. So um, in fact, in some cases, I think you can argue it creates poverty. You know, yeah. People go mm -hmm. from subsistence farming. I mean, most of the native indigenous peoples of Central America have gone from fairly sustainable you know, agricultural communities to all having to be forced to go into the cities and work in, you know, factories or right. work as laborers on these big plantations. Sure. So, but, you know, yeah. people are always going to need sugar. People are always right. going to consume chocolates and coffee and bananas. Mm -hmm. Those things aren't going to necessarily go away. Mm -hmm. God bless all those people that are living the 100-mile diet, you know, but the, the world's not going to all shift to that. So in the, in the interim, you know, we need mechanisms that can help make those relationships fair and just for everybody involved. So, um, well, when I returned from that, you know, piece of my life, you know, the, the goal, the only goal that I had was that I, I was a food hobbyist and I'd always loved food right. and I'd dabbled in catering and things too. So that was oh, kind cool. of a natural orientation for me. Um, and so my goal really was to come back to engage in some kind of a food business, and, uh, and, but I did not want to perpetuate or possibly even participate in that economic, mm -hmm. you know, in that global economic right. food system. We're also engaged in lots of other projects to meet that piece of the mission, which was to raise awareness. So that okay. uh, has a lot to do with Green Cuisine, which I mentioned to you, which is that event that we do every right. year here on the farm that celebrates local food artisans, um, as well as projects that we do, say, overseas. Um, we're currently working on a project called Run Across Ethiopia that I'm the um, director of operations of a group of guys that are going to run across Ethiopia to raise awareness and money, $100,000, to build some schools. Cool. More than anything else, I think it's, for anybody, it's making that first mental shift. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, any of us who have, like, decided to be vegetarians or to change something, it never really clicks until in your head you say, I'm no longer a smoker. Or yeah. I'm a vegetarian now. Now you may still have a cigarette or two, and you're still going to eat a burger every now and then. Mm -hmm. But if in your head you start telling yourself, "This is who I am. This is my lifestyle," right. you will continue to move in that direction. Right. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Yeah, we're adventure. really yeah. hoping uh, that we can make this okay. work okay. long term. Right. You know. It'll <laughs> and don't we all? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fifteen years, and I'm still hoping it works. You know.